a ploy by some Nigerian ministers to control and micromanage the operations of the agencies under their ministries till 2023 is beginning to emerge. The tactic employed by such ministers is to write petitions with damning allegations of corruption to President Mohamed Buhari against the agencies and their chief executives. Get the president's approval to oust the chief executives and other an open-ended forensic audit of the parastators. Typical examples include the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, and the Nigerian Ports Authority, NPA, whose respective supervising ministers are Senator Gosula Kwabio and Honorable Rutimi Amechi. Both men, coincidentally, are former state governors and are believed to have ambitions for higher office come 2023. However, stakeholders from the oil rich Niger Delta region and lawmakers in the House of Representatives have become restive over the violation of the NDDC Establishment Act, which provides for the constitution of a governing board for the commission. Joining us now from Asaba to dissect the political undercurrents that have prevented the administration from reconstituting the NDDC board is the deputy governor of Delta State, Kinsley Utuaro. Good morning and welcome to the show, Mr. Utuaro. Good to have you here. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good to have you too. Yes, thank you very much for joining us. Well, you, you must have uh, listened to my uh, introduction. Since April, uh, the jaw yeah. The Joy Youth uh, Congress, uh, led by Peter Igbifa, uh, has been uh, protesting that the federal mm -hmm. government should immediately uh, reconstitute the board of the Niger Delta Development Commission. At a point, the IYC gave uh, a deadline. That deadline, the fresh one, expires at the end of this month. In between, uh, government Kumukolo, uh, popularly known as Tumpolo, uh, also gave uh, a one-week notice. Uh, which, if the government did not respect, will result in the breakdown of law and order uh, in the Niger Delta. Paike Clark has also uh, supported uh, the Joy Youth Congress and the governors of the Niger Delta, who are saying that, look, there must be a proper constitution of the board of the NDDC and what is known as sole administratorship or uh, acting interim management, you know, uh, that those levels are unknown under the <clears throat> relevant enabling act. What is the position of the, uh, <clears throat> of the data state government in this regard? Yeah, uh, thank you uh, very much. Um, the position of the Senator Dr. Ifan Yokoa led government of Delta State is in tandem with the position held by these critical stakeholders you have before now mentioned. And um, we are of the strong opinion that the long delays and the non-constitution of the substantive board of the NDDC is in flagrant abuse of the act establishing the NDDC. That is the position of the Delta State Government. And like you've said, the NDDC cannot be run like a sole proprietorship business because it is not meant to be so. So this is the position of the Delta State Government. And you recall some few months back, uh, the South-South uh, governors did meet and in their resolution, they opined that the board should be constituted immediately. And of course, they also uh, said that financial receipts in favor of the NDDC uh, should be lodged in an escrow account. And this, I'm sure, uh, is born out of the fact that the sole proprietorship uh, uh, leadership, the interim uh, leadership of the NDDC is unknown to the act establishing it. That, of course, is the position of uh, the Delta State government and, of course, all of the critical stakeholders um, you have mentioned. That position remains. And um, the recent spits of uh, ultimatums given by the High YC and some other critical stakeholders, including that of Sheikh government, Ekumpolo, is also in tandem 
with the position of the Senator Dr. Ifan Yokoa led government and that of the South South governors and that of um, Pandev led by Chief Dr. Ike Clark and, and us all. So that is the position. And um, uh, we, we are thankful to God that uh, Senator Apabu, a man esteemed and distincted for his transformation agenda while he was governor for Kwaibun State, uh, had cause to come to um, the Niger Delta region to, of course, consult with the agri critical stakeholders. And uh, I'm thankful to God that um, he came. If he had sat in the cozy of his office, uh, some of us feel very strongly that um, uh, some may have made do well uh, by, uh, by, by implementing or doing some unwholesome things you know, in relation to the ultimatums that they have given. So I, I want to thank him. And it is the expectation of the critical stakeholders that the board should be constituted. It is also thought very strongly that the reasons are due or true up uh, that the board um, would be constituted when the government is done with the said forensic audit, in my opinion, and in the opinion of critical stakeholders, is untenable. Untenable against the backdrop of the fact that the board can be constituted and the forensic audit can, of course, be going on. Uh, for me, I can't contend with the reasoning that the constitution of the board and the forensic audit must be like uh, 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 cement twins that are inseparable. I, I don't think that reason is tenable. The board can be constituted and the forensic audit, of course, can be ongoing. And at the end, we have a win-win situation because we feel that uh, the non-constitution of the board is doing so much harm than good to the region that is crying for, uh, the, uh, for, for, for growth and development, as the case may be. So that is the, uh, the take of, uh, of the critical stakeholders, including uh, my government led by Senator Okowa. So the expectations are high, and uh, I'm sure Senator Pabio understands the mood and the tension generated by these delays when he visited the critical stakeholders in the Niger Delta region. And um, information have it uh, to the effect that in no distant time, uh, maybe by the close of the month, uh, would have far gone in constituting the substantive board. That's, of course, what the people want, and that exactly is what ought to be done in the circumstance. Well, Deputy Governor Kinsley Tuaro, we'll take a short break now. Mm -hmm. uh, when we mm -hmm. return, the conversation will continue. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. We're still with Deputy Governor of Delta State, Kingsley Otuaro. Now, you were making the point before the break about how the forensic audit could have been conducted while the board was established, because we can walk and chew gum at the same time. You also talked about how the Minister for Niger Delta Affairs had come and given a listening ear to stakeholders. Are you assuaged by the fact that he's now announced that that forensic audit will be ready next month and that he's expediting action on the composition of the NDDC board and will soon, in his own words, he didn't give a date for that, forward um, names to the National Assembly for confirmation, as was done in 2019. And we all know what happened after that. Yeah, given the tension generated by the delays, like I've said, of the constitution of the substantive board and the ultimatums that were given by various groups, including that of Shigo Mete Pompolo, and the responsive visit of uh, uh, the minister for Niger Delta to the Niger Delta uh, uh, region for a consultative uh, meeting, uh, somehow, I, I was part of uh, that consultative meeting, and uh, I'm very much aware of the fact uh, that um, uh, the consensus reached in the inner meetings, which of course I was also part of, was that this board 
will be constituted at the close of this month, June, which, uh, in my opinion, is some um, few days from now, about a week or so from now. So the expectations of all those who were involved in that critical engagement is that the board will be constituted at the close of this month. And if there is anything to the contrary, um, Senator Papio knows exactly what to do. He, he needs to reach out because any gap in the circumstance will be misconstrued for something else. And then for us in Delta State Government, we don't want a repeat of what did happen in 2016 that boxed up, up into a recessionary period where there were resurgence of militancy in the region. And then we observed the breaches of critical oil and gas facilities where the transfer cables, uh, 48 inch line was breached and their production output was cut and that we are not able to pay salaries and uh, taking up uh, statutory obligations as government. We don't want a repeat of that that happened. So we're working very closely with Senator Pabio to ensuring that all that needs to be done is done and the board constituted so as to simmer down all these pits of agitation from the critical stakeholders. So um, it is expected that the board from uh, the board will be constituted given the uh, consultative meetings we, we had. And um, I think Akpabi knows what to do. If for any reason, in my opinion, there will be some extensions or delay, then he needs uh, to get in touch uh, with his friends because he is, uh, I, I, like I said, an highly esteemed and distincted leader in the region, a man held in high esteem. And, um, that is, is so loved by the people and he's made so much friends uh, across the, the divide. So he will have to reach out to them and then maybe give reasons why um, um, he should be given some time to ensuring that the board is constituted. Because what Senator Pabio saw and what I, my humble self, standing uh, for the government of the state, uh, saw with our eyes was not something to, um, uh, to, to play with. The tension was truly, truly high. I describe you as a man of peace. You've been doing a lot of peace building. Can you can you tell us, you know, mm -hmm. the things, some of the things mm -hmm. you have done, you know, as regards this? Yeah. Um, yes, I'm a man of peace, and um, of course, uh, being in government, you can't uh, overemphasize the fact that, um, uh, as a government, we hold that statutory responsibility. Uh, to ensuring that there is peace and security of lives and property uh, in our state uh, at large. And um, mm -hmm. to, to that extent, uh, to that extent, the Senator Dr. Ifan Yokoa led government uh, from the outset uh, knew that we would not be able to deliver on our laudable programs and policies of government as it were without dealing with the phenomenon of peace. So, what we did was to constitute in um, institutional structures that are meant to deal with the phenomenon of peace uh, in the state, including the higher producing environment um, of, the, of the state, because that, of course, is critical. So we have structures. Uh, we have the, um, the Delta State Advisory, uh, Advisory and Peace Building Council, led by Professor Simon Yebare. Um, um, a, a council that is uh, mandated to build in peace amongst uh, critical community stakeholders. And we have social structures like the Delta State Orientation uh, uh, Bureau. We have the Delta State Waterways and Land Security Committee. Uh, we, we have the Delta State uh, Advocacy Committee against, against all oil asset destruction. That one, of course, is uh, headed by my humble self. And uh, we have the Operation Delta Hawk. We have the Farmers Elders Committee. You know, we have all of these structures uh, with a bit of driving home the phenomenon of peace and security uh, in the state. And so far, so good. Um, we, we've been able to stabilize the state and uh, we've been able to uh, carry on our responsibilities, you know, um, as expected for our people. Well, uh, Mr. Tuaro, data state interest. The interest of data mm -hmm. state mm -hmm. 
Is this all about the fact that uh, going by Section 4 and uh, 12 of the uh, NDDC Act, it's now the turn of Delta State to produce uh, the chairman of the NDDC? Uh, and maybe that's why some stakeholders from Delta State are saying that the uh, federal government should not come up with another list, that they should go back to the old list of nominees who should just be uh, inaugurated as board members uh, because the chairmanship at that time, uh, in line with the enabling law, uh, was zoned to Delta State. So for Delta State, this interest in NDDC board, is it all about it is our turn? And in any case, this NDDC has also been criticized heavily by everyone that it's not been efficient, it's not been effective in terms of service delivery. Even if we have the board, what difference will it make? It's, it's, it's going to make a great lot of difference. Uh, on the subject of, um, of who becomes who, uh, I think the law, or the, the act, is, um, is, is explicit on it. Uh, it's, explicit, it's, it's, it's clear on it. So uh, our position is simple. All that needs to be done as it concerns the constitution of the substantive board has to be in conformity, in compliance with the provisions of the Act. So we can't be working in flagrant abuse of uh, the law. So that's our position. So uh, from our own interpretation, yes, uh, the, the, the shaman is meant for us, uh, for, for, for Delta State, and uh, of course, uh, those up there know exactly what to do, and we are very sure they are going to do that that is, is needful. Uh, then we think, yes, it is of the thinking of um, stakeholders in the region that the NDDC hadn't lived up to expectation, up to its buildings. And um, we are concerned, we are worried. Uh, so that, that is the more reason we think that having a situation where the law, as it were, is not strict to sense so followed, you have a situation where um, it will like grow from uh, bad to worse, and that is what we are against. If the law is followed and the board is put in place, and then it may not, I mean, may not have been as bad as um, um, we've seen. That's why there's the insistence that, yes, please put the board in place because the law is, of, is in support of it. And uh, by so doing, we can now hold whoever that is there accountable for what he or she needs to do in line with the law for the development of the region. But when you have a sole preparatorship kind of arrangement, and then it, it, it vitiates um, the whole setting, and people are worried. That's just the gravamen of the whole agitations here and there. And I'm very sure our friend and leader, uh, Senator Pabio, is not unaware of this development and is going to do the needful in no distant time. So what would your preference be, just to be completely clear? Would you prefer that those who were nominated in 2019 and approved by the Senate are reinstated now, or a fresh batch, keeping in line with what Dr. Abati has said. If you go alphabetically, Delta State is up next for chairman of NDDC, and Bielsa is up next for managing director of NDDC. Uh, for me, I'm not adverse to uh, whoever that comes in. Uh, the 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 board that was uh, uh, was uh, the the board was that uh, brought up the other time. Um, um, I think it is representative of the interest of the people. So if, if it is that that is chosen, uh, as it were, fine and good. Our primary concern is that there should be a board, and whoever is there, we very really think that it will be responsible and accountable to the people. So uh, that's, that's, that's our concern. Who is there and who is not there might not be the issue this time around, but the board should be put in place. Because that's what the law says, that's what the people are saying, and um, we just need to do that that is right, and, and then we'll be, we'll be okay. So uh, there are many 
areas to this, you know, Delta having the next chairman of NDC. I want to know about the impact, mm -hmm. you know, as regards project of NDC in Delta State and as it relates to what is currently going on on ground as regards local politics in Delta State and who will succeed, you know, uh, Governor Ifai Okowa. There's a slant, you know, between the robos and the Isokos are saying they're left behind. And there's this conversation going on. And all of this goes back even to the quality of representation and the projects that NDDC have done in these areas. A lot of people in the Soko land, for instance, still feel they're marginalized. I mean, the Ijo people too are clamoring big time. They say it's their time, you know, to lead the state. Names are being mentioned here and there. How does all of this segue into the NDDC conversation for you? Yeah, Delta State, as we are all aware, is an heterogeneous state. Uh, and um, uh, we are one indivisible people. Uh, we may have uh, differences in thoughts here and there, but the bottom line of it is that we have inbuilt mechanisms of resolving uh, the petty differences and uh, differences in thoughts and opinion. Uh, so that, that's where we are. And so, um, yes, we are not unaware of the agitations of um, uh, different ethnic nations, the Urobos, the Ijos, the Shekiris, the Undokua, just mention them, you know, wanting their bite uh, on who uh, represents them. It, it, it is a normal phenomenon, and that's no problem. Um, whoever that comes in for us as a government and as a people, we'll be able to um, sort ourselves out. That's, that's no problem. And um, on, the, on the subject of uh, the infrastructural delivery of uh, the board, as it were, for us as a government, the Senator Dr. Ifan Yokoa led government, we have some concerns. Uh, the concerns are that we think the NDDC can do a little more better by engaging or embarking on major projects in the state and across uh, the, the, uh, the, the region, not the small tickets of uh, you desilt a small creek, you, uh, you plant this and you this and all of that, and what a year is X, Y, Z billions uh, gone here for maybe a small desilting, uh, maybe, and all of that. Oh, oh, and all of that. We think that that's not the way to go. We need infrastructural development in the region that will be what while impacting the life of our people. Major road, major bridges, that's what we expect the NDDC to do. It's better taking up a major project, maybe a, a bridge or a major road, than these bits of um, pockets of small, small jobs here, yeah, supply these and all of that, buy uh, uh, ambulance and this and all of that. Yes, I'm not saying all of that is uh, is, is bad, but this could be ancillary. We look forward into an NDDC that will be constructing major bridges, major roads, you know, major infrastructural development for our people. It is, if you, if we have a major uh, road, maybe traversing um, uh, the river and communities, because, for example, in Delta State, uh, it, it is a huge um, um, a river Rhine uh, uh, state. About 40% of our land mass is a river Rhine. We have a little over 160 kilometers coastline. So, yeah, and that speaks volume of the fact that a lot of our communities are, of course, in the coastline, in the river Rhine. Some of the communities are, are not accessible um, by land. Many, many of them. We have a lot of communities in the Undokwa. Uh, worry not, for example, in Worry not, the whole local government, about over 90% of the local government is in the river, right? Worry Southwest, over 90%, Burutu, Bomandi, substantial percent of the, uh, of the local government is, is, uh, is in the river, right? So we we'll look for it, and again, these communities are not as developed as the uh, urban communities. Uh, paradoxically, these are the communities that host the 
oil deposits and gas deposit in the state. So if we have a situation where an NDDC is linking community A in the river Rhine to another community B somewhere, we applaud them and on these pockets of uh, and all of that. I think that's not what the government of Delta State wants. That's not what the people want. Uh, and uh, we want uh, a kind of change in the direction. And that change can only happen when we have a people that are accountable to the people, when we have a board that is accountable to the people. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the level of agitation. That's what we want. Well, Mr. Tuaro, uh, we're going to take a short break. But before then, when we return, we're going to move away from NDDC and talk about Delta State and the politics of Delta State. Uh, so you just stay with us. We'll be right back and be prepared. We'll take this short break now and we'll return shortly. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on the Arise News Channel. Our guest is still the Deputy Governor of Delta State, Hinsley Otuaro. Deputy Governor, thank you for staying with us. Well, I told you to be prepared because now we're going to yeah, discuss thank you. Delta State politics. Not too long ago, the Governor of Delta State sacked his commissioners and asked those who are interested in succeeding him uh, to come forward. Well, you didn't resign, maybe because you, are, you have a joint ticket with the Governor. But it is reported that you showed interest in the governorship election in uh, 2023. Is that true or not? And then secondly, how are you favored or not favored uh, by the policies of zoning uh, based on gentleman's agreement in Delta State? Because if you were to follow that uh, you know, uh, gentleman's agreement, you are from, uh, I think, Delta South, right? You, know, uh, you probably will not uh, qualify because by that agreement, it's supposed to be the turn again of uh, Delta uh, Central. So what do you say about this? Uh, are you still interested in the governorship? Are you favored by uh, the gentleman's agreement? Yeah, thank, you. thank you very much. Um, first, uh, it is within the powers of the governor, Senator Dr. Ifan Yokoa, to uh, dissolve his cabinet and um, uh, reappoint uh, those he feels very strongly that can help us uh, deliver on our stronger Delta agenda because that truly is our agenda. We want to enthrone a stronger and more secured Delta state for our tomorrow. So uh, that is an exercise of his power and um, there's no problems about that and uh, we are happy with it and I think the people are also uh, happy with it. Um, as to the other questions you've thrown up, uh, as to if I'm uh, contesting or indicating interest, um, zoning and all of that, I, I, I don't want to get myself into a hall of that. Uh, the point is, I am a Deltan, I am a Nigerian, uh, like any other person, and so we all have the rights to aspire uh, to uh, elected positions and, and all of that. So. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say anything. If I have the right to aspire, then within the context of the law, I, I can aspire. Uh, but it is not in my place to tell you if I want to. And um, well, the other issue of zoning and not zoning uh, of um, the governorship seats to south, north, uh, central senatorial district, uh, all those are matters for. Um, matters of politics and matters of the system uh, to, to look critically into and take a decision on it. Um, I, I recall uh, the governor uh, did say in one of uh, our outing, the interactive session with uh, journalists, and um, I think this question was posed him, and um, all he said was to the effect that uh, it is God Almighty that enthrones uh, leaders, uh, as far as is concerned. And, and, and beyond that, and the leadership of the states, uh, of the PDP especially, will look into uh, what is fair and just for our people. We'll look into um, the records as they were, uh, we're going to engage ourselves, and of course come out with what is tenable, what, what is fair, what is just, 
And that, of course, is what our people want. And that's what uh, I believe in. And uh, we hope very strongly that at the end of the day, like I've said before now, we are an indivisible people. And so would we remain strong. So all of these are matters of politics. And um, um, we are getting close into it. And I, I know that uh, in no distant time, we will be able to resolve all of those uh, rough edges and move ahead as the people that were over time being. Right. You earlier made a reference to your peacemaking efforts. So I want to talk about that, which has become like an unofficial part of your portfolio. Can you take us through your efforts from inception to cool the tensions in the oil creeks, your efforts with security building in Delta State, and in particular, the recent 72-hour ultimatum issued by Fulani Jihadists with regards to Governor Okoa banning open grazing in Delta State? Yeah, the, the phenomenon of peace building is not about an individual in Delta State. It is not about me as an individual. It is not even about uh, the Senator Dr. Uh, Senator Dr. Ifan Yokoa, the governor of the state. It's not all about him. Yes, uh, God in his sovereignty and choice had made us uh, governor and deputy governor respectively um, at, at this point in time, but it's not all about us. Like I said, what we did was to ensure that we put institutional structures in place to drive home this phenomenon of peace, given the fact that it will just be main wishes of our programs and policies if we don't have uh, a stable society. Um, so that, to that effort, everybody had been on deck to ensuring that we deal with the issue of security uh, of lives and property. And uh, I also have been critically involved uh, to that extent, like I did mention, uh, outlining some of those structures. I made mention of the Delta State Advocacy Committee against oil asset destruction and um, I head that committee because we feel that we need all of the resources, all of the uh, receipts, financial receipts, to be able to do that that we want to do. And in a situation where we have an oil producing environment that is in turmoil, and that becomes a huge challenge. Incidentally, I'm from the oil producing environment of the state, and uh, uh, I was born and raised there, and uh, somehow I have uh, some understanding of, uh, of the issues. And um, uh, what we did was to embark in a persuasive and aggressive advocacy campaign on the natives of the area that, hey, come, um, we can do this thing better. We can engage ourselves and um, ensure that we have a win-win situation. And that's what we're doing. And uh, the, the people have listened to the Senator Koa led government, and um, we have relative peace uh, in the oil producing environment. And by God's grace, we've been able to, given that, uh, plug back resources in infrastructural upgrade of the entire um, um, oil producing environment, and the people are happy. So much is being done there, so much of infrastructural development, uh, like I said, in this oil producing environment mm -hmm. is done there. And um, uh, the people are very, very happy because uh, okay. before okay, now, okay, um, we, 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 we okay. find a situation where okay, these communities th that um, host the oil uh, facilities okay, uh, are, are, are like in terms of um, development um, comparatively with uh, their counterparts up, up, up in the upland, um, there was this gap. And we've been able to plug okay. a lot of resources and infrastructural development in those areas, building bridges, building roads. Uh, for example, you have the... Um, okay, comrade. The uh, Ogeye okay, uh, floating... I'd like, like to jump in here because uh, of time. ...market, a multi-billionaire mm -hmm. project. You have the ASE bridge, you know, linking Undukwa West and Undukwa. Okay. Uh, East, local government area, you have the Ayakuruma oh, Bridge, okay. many lot of huge okay. infrastructure, okay. and the uh, people okay. are truly, truly happy. Okay, so Governor. It uh, is okay, your Deputy Governor. Uh, a holistic approach in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, peace and security. It's, it's not about me. It's not about uh, an individual. And we are happy that we're doing well. Of course, you out there, you can safely say okay. Delta State okay. if you is can amongst... Get me. 
one of the states uh, in the country. If you can hear me, sir, real quickly. Are you talking to me? Yes, I've been talking to you. I've been calling on you since, sir. If you can hear me, real quickly. Oh, and sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, a lot of watchers, yeah. political watchers, are saying the way the governor wants to go as regards this gentleman agreement will push him up against former Governor James Onanefe Buri because he was part of this agreement. That was why when he was governor, Benjamin Elue from Delta Ibo area was deputy governor. And you are enjoying that as a co-wise governor now from Indokwa area. You and Ijoma are deputy governor. So what's your take on this, this fight that is now brewing? Because Ibori will say, let's maintain status quo, and the governor is saying otherwise. Well, incidentally, we have less than a minute to go. Oh, your response very quickly. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, um, I, I, I think, I, I, sorry, I, I think that um, uh, the former governor, Chief James Nanife Ibori, and um, Senator Dr. Ifan Yokoa uh, have come a long way um, as far as um, each and every one of us in the state is concerned. They are one indivisible uh, people. And I'm very sure that all of these uh, issues uh, will, be, uh, will, will be dealt with uh, at, at, uh, at, at, at a given time. Um, well, thank you very much, Duken Kinsley Otoaro, uh, yeah, Deputy yeah. Governor of uh, Delta State, for joining us on the morning show today. Thank you very much indeed.